Hello and welcome back and that is right today we're returned to the subject of Plex Media Server Testing and today's NAS is the Terramaster F4424 Max, their brand new TOS 6 and i5 powered NAS system. We've talked about Terramaster NAS here on the channel before and we're revisiting their latest 4 bay device. It's got 4 hard drive bays and 2 M.2 NVMe bays. Now a few disclaimers straight off the bat. Number one, I am conducting this in an office with some building work going on nearby so occasionally you're gonna hear some of that bleeding through. I'm gonna try to remove some of it but there's not a lot I can do about all of that noise. Uh, next up, as you can see from the specifications here on screen, we are utilizing a system that not only has a decent little CPU but it's also got integrated graphics and on the right hand side of the screen you can be able to see Plex Media Server's resource consumption all the way through the tests. This is a NAS that is taking advantage of hardware transcoding. I've set it, uh, the options to make my CPU hurt and I'm taking advantage of those onboard integrated graphics there so we're not holding anything back. Also we're going to be conducting the test both here in the web browser and we're going to be conducting them here on the Plex client app because sometimes we're going to be using transcoding and sometimes we aren't and it's going to be a lot easier to flick between them as you'll see throughout the course of the video but there's our NAS all the storage is located on the hard drive base we've got the hard drive base there and our Plex media inside is located on the main hard drive storage array if we open up the storage area just to show you it there go to our disks we've got four drives there in each of the individual disk bays and these are 4TB Seagate Arnwolf drives we're not using the M2 and BMEs and the external drive there is just being used for backup so that's our setup right let's crack on with the test shall we so we're going to go into some 1080p testing first as we see there's our Terramaster there on the left we're going to go straight in for something really really straightforward to give ourselves a center perspective we're just going to go ahead and play that three megabits per second file it's playing in original quality you can see the file being played there on the right hand side and you can see CPU utilization is borderline non-existent lovely stuff now we're not gonna bother waiting till the end we just wanted to leave this one here to show you it's a 30 second file and that dark orange buffering was fully completed next up same file in an HEVC format we're playing the original quality playing absolutely fine but this time we're going to engage with some transcoding. We're going to convert the file down to 720p. And what we should see now is one, this file being played back natively should change to hardware transcoding here at the top. We'll come to that in just a moment. And CPU utilization is still pretty you know gone it's not there so it's great to see that we're not really seeing much impact on a domestic level file. Now if we move away from that, why don't we go for something a touch beefier? We're going to go for an HEVC 30 megabits per second file. This is pretty darn big, 30 megabit. You're not going to have a lot of media of this format. And straight away, we're going to convert it down to 480p, very, very low. A nice straightforward transcode there. Uh, we're seeing the file, the buffering's already completed. There wasn't even time to engage with the idea of transcoding there. And as you can see, although it is showing now transcoding there on that screen, CPU utilization is completely unaffected by this. So now we're going to wrap things up even further. We're going to go for our heaviest 1080p file. This is a 100 megabits per second HD file, HEVC or H.265 is the compression here. We're going to go ahead, play that file. And you can see playing in the original picture quality there is a slight pause. And we're seeing that freeze there at seven seconds. Now, more often than not, this can be a bandwidth concern rather than it is a concern for the file being played. But nonetheless, let's bring that down to 720p and that should navigate that. As you can see, transcoding absolutely fine. Navigating that file down to 720p, we saw the CPU go up just a couple of percent, but overall still absolutely fine. But we're going to see the occasional bandwidth issue uh, coming up from time to time. So now we've done those 1080p files, why don't we make our way to some 4K? Now the 4K files we're going to test here on the web browser, but this is where we're also going to be taking advantage here on the local access here on the Windows client. So if we go into this file here called Roast Duck, this is another HEVC or H.265 file, but it's a 60 megabits per second 8-bit HDR. This is heavy going. 
So if we play this file, it is immediately converting the file because it knows it is a dense little file there. It's not long, but it's heavy. It's very weighty as files go. And plan the transcoding version. There's our hardware transcoding there. We're even transcoding the ACC audio as well. And the CPU still remains largely unaffected, which is great stuff there. This is exactly what we want to see from a system of this caliber. Lovely stuff. Why don't we play that same file now, but we're going to be playing it in its native playback there. Just for our basis of comparison, as you can see, no transcoding happening here. We will have to factor in, of course, that even though while this file is being played native, we are gonna to have to be mindful of the CPU, memory, and GPU of the system we're recording on right now. But still, nonetheless, absolutely no issues happening right now. It's playing it back absolutely sweet as a nut. But what if we ramp things up even further? Why don't we play that same hefty file, but this time we transcode on both platforms. So we go ahead, we play it, we transcode it down, we transcode this one down to 720, we play that same file, and once again, transcode it down, but this time we transcode down even more to 480. This is an egregious bit of stuff that we're making these two systems do. And I'll say right now, looking on the right hand side of the screen, not only is the transcoding taking place, but the CPU, again, largely unaffected. We're seeing that playback. We're seeing no difficulties in this file being played. And again, with transcoding, hardware transcoding, we're still not even reaching anywhere close. I think the max we've hit so far is 5.22% CPU utilization there, with two arguably very aggressive transcodes happening there on screen. So, coming out of those, let's move forward into something a little beefier. This time, we're going to go into the 4K test files, and this time we're looking at Beauty of Taiwan. This is a heavier file, and although it's a smaller bit rate than the previous file, I should say uh, the megabits per second bit rate, it's actually technically a heavier file. So, if we go ahead and play that file there in the background, we know that file should play absolutely fine. And while it does that, we'll get Beauty of Taiwan playing... Uh, so we have it here on the left being converted and here on the right being played back natively. So we'll leave those two versions playing there. We have a look. There's our transcoding. There's our native playback. The CPU not breaking a sweat whatsoever. So in that case, why don't we start challenging this? And we've lined up absolutely loads of simultaneous playbacks here on screen. Right now, all of them playing, you can see all of them racked out here. We've got hardware transcoding, hardware transcoding, native playback, hardware transcoding, hardware transcoding, and the CPU still continues to absolutely own it. The memory is starting to get a bit of a kick in. The system memory utilization, I might add, is quite high, but overall, with all of that transcoding and playback going on right now, this system is absolutely killing it, which is fantastic to see. Obviously, as you can see, we haven't fully saturated a, uh, a 100 megabit, uh, sorry, a 1,000 megabits per second connection there, but still absolutely fine. And overall, really, really happy with what we're seeing here. Let's move on to further testing. Next up, we move to the bigger end of the spectrum when it comes to our 4K files. And these are the Hench files here you're seeing here on the left-hand side of the screen. These are the Jellyfish 120, 200, and 400 megabits per second files. Now, just to give ourselves some perspective, we're going to play back the 120 megabits per second 4K file. It's trying to play it back in original quality there. And we're probably gonna hit something of a bandwidth wall there once again. So if we convert that file to something a bit easier to access, once again, we're gonna be sending that file through sweet as a nut. We saw a tiny blip there on the CPU utilization, but with hardware transcoding, it really is that straightforward. So next up, we're gonna kind of challenge these things a little bit more. We're going to the 200 megabits per second file. Again, it is going to force that file through to a conversion, but don't worry, we will be toying with that later on. But nonetheless, we're seeing a 200 megabits per second HEVC Ultra, H2, uh, Ultra HD Temp HDR file playing absolutely sweet as an up there. Lovely to see. Again, going fine, converted automatically, fine. And finally, the 400 megabits per second file, as this system absolutely destroys all of the playback thus far. And again, bear in mind, at 400 megabits per second, 
you know, at 40 megabit, given that most people will be running this on a gigabit network. This is an unrealistic file at the best of times, but nonetheless converting it down so we can push it through. We're seeing the file, attempted playback, we're seeing it go all the way through, and again, buffering is vastly outweighing playback. Still call this an absolute success. Thank you, hardware transcoding and those XE graphics that this system includes. Now, let's go for something beefier still. Let's get uh, Plex open there in the client app, and we're gonna go ahead and play this file in a conversion. So let's go ahead, play this file, and immediately convert it down to a ludicrous 328. From there, we're going to convert and play that same file again, and this time, we're gonna convert it down further still. So we can go ahead, open that up there, get this converted down even lower to 40p, and we repeat this task, going and playing another one, bringing that one down as well. We go just simple automatic conversion there. And finally, we've got this one here playing this file. Again, right now we're starting to hit somewhat where my system is going to be having difficulties on the GPU front. But for now, let's refresh that tab. We're seeing playback being attempted. Move away, go to one of the other conversion options there. And if we refresh this tab, we can only really get that one playing there. So this may be an input-output issue. Nonetheless, the odds of you trying to do something of this caliber like this are pretty slim. As we can see, memory utilization is hitting 50% here in the back end. And we're seeing the I.O. measures of the drive and what's being accessed all the time. But overall, happy with what I'm seeing, but... I kind of disappointed the way this wasn't able to play back those heftier files together. What I'll do is I'll reprep that now and reattempt the test. So now let's reattempt that test, going ahead with playback across numerous platforms here. And again, we will factor in automatic conversions for the browser based access there, just to see if we can get more results out of this for that live playback across each of these individual formats there. We're still hitting something of a bandwidth restriction, but if we go back into the Plex Media server here, CPU seems to be fine. RAM utilization is high. But once again, we're having difficulty accessing all of those files simultaneously despite their weight. This is still a 1.4 gigabyte file. So keep in mind, this is highly unrealistic at 1.4 gigabytes for 30 seconds, but still nonetheless, kind of disappointed that we're still seeing the throttling there on the bandwidth. Perhaps on a 10G media network, this would be better. But again, who is running Plex on a 10G network? Digging deeper, we can definitely isolate that the issue is to do with the RAM. More RAM is going to be needed for this, given that as soon as we executed the second playback, we hit 72.8%. It has to be said that efficiency of that memory does seem a little questionable there. I still think it's plenty of memory and the odds of you utilizing a system in this way, but I think if you are going to exceed this kind of playback, you're going to need to upgrade to around 16 gig of memory beyond the initial 8 this system arrives with. But let's make our way now onto some 8K files here as we end today's video. Let's exit some of these, bring that up on there. We make our way into 8K playback. Now, unsurprisingly, if we're going to try and play back 8K on a, um, you know, a domestic desktop setting here, we're not going to have a good time. But nonetheless, if we go in with the 8K performance testing, we're just to see what we're on about here. Let's go ahead and try and play an 8K file here in the web browser. It's going to convert it immediately. And we'll move that down there, come back to that later on. As we can see, we're attempting to play that 8K playback. Again, we're playing it in native, and the CPU isn't responding. But that's a lot of it almost certainly to do with the web browser tab here. We're only using 170 megs, but we're still utilizing a decent amount of hardware resources. So rather than test it in that window, why don't we test it here in the client? We go for the 8K performance testing again on that TNAS. We have that up, bring it up into the library mode. And from there, go ahead and play that file. Bring it up, we'll bring it up there. We've got the original quality here being played through. We're not gonna have the browser restrictions or issues that we saw earlier on. And again, absolutely fine. We can flick along, we can transcode it down. Let's go nuts and transcode it down to just 240p at 0.3 megabits per second. 
And although we're going to see some mucking around, it's still able to bring down that enormous 8K file very easily with little to no CPU utilization. Memory, again, is something of a buckler here. We may have to look into upgrading that, but nonetheless, these are good performance numbers. And just to know they're not a fluke, let's go ahead and tackle another 8K file. Let's go for Nightscape 8K, playing back in original 8K quality on Plex on that gigabit network. And again, as we see here, we're absolutely fine. It's playing through. We're getting very close to maxing out the gigabit network, as you can see there. But overall, still pretty happy with what we're seeing there. Overall, happy, happy, happy. And again, just for argument's sake, let's transcode this 8K file down to 160p, which frankly is bonkers. And as we can see, moving forward, absolutely fine. Happy with what we're seeing and overall applaud this. So let's tail out with our heaviest 4K file. This is Uzbekistan, 60 frames per second, um, the VP90 uh, compression and again playing absolutely fine and I think that's the big takeaway here. We'll even try to run one in the background for the absolute hell of it. Um, I would say right now this is probably the best TerraMaster NAS for Plex Media Server I've ever seen. It's not the cheapest, let's be realistic, we are still talking about dual 10G on an i5 NAS, but when it comes to Plex, this is the best TerraMaster NAS I've ever seen for it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, but apart from that, thank you so much for watching. There's links in the description to get hold of this system, alongside some reviews that are hopefully already live on the F8 SSD+. Plus. I recommend you check out that little flash system, but if you do want to get hold of this device, and this video has helped you, and you are going to shop at Amazon, uh, b &H, or AliExpress, and make sure those three things are true, do go to the links in the description, as these will help the channel out as we get a small commission on every purchase. Again, it goes directly into what we do, and it helps us keep doing it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.